Good morning. Welcome to the channel, Fishing with Tex. Uh, today we're going to be doing a canoe setup guide. We're going to be talking about why I like to use this over anything else. We're going to talk about how I set it up and we're going to talk about where you can find one. So before we get started in the video, if you guys could please like, comment, subscribe. Any feedback is really greatly appreciated. This is a very new channel, so that stuff really helps me out. All right, let's get into the video. All right, guys, so to get started, this is my canoe. It's a Indian River canoe, 14 foot outdoorsman tunnel hull canoe. Uh, they don't make these canoes anymore. Indian River canoes went out of business, but I believe this is one of the best canoes on the market for um, fishing, glass fishing, saltwater fishing, stuff like that. Uh, to get started, why I decided to use the canoe was um, I fished on a lot of different vessels. I fished on a paddleboard, I fished on a kayak. I fished on a, a boat. I had a nice skiff, uh, 18 foot Maverick HPX, um, beautiful skiff. Ended up having a kid, had to move uh, to another location. So storage became an issue. And um, I decided that uh, I needed something with range. So I started trying to come up with something and this canoe is what I came up with. I got this canoe used off of Craigslist for $300. Um, I got it from a guy in Central Florida. So there's a lot of these canoes still out there. You just gotta look for them. Uh, Offer Up is a good place to look and Craigslist. Uh, a lot of people just got these sitting around in the garage in their backyard. This this lake right behind me here, there's probably like four or five of them just in this neighborhood alone. Um, so the canoe is great because it gives you the versatility and uh, the uh, of a kayak basically. So you can just throw it in your truck and take it anywhere. Uh, you can store it in your garage. You don't need a trailer. You don't need insurance, but then you can put a motor on the back and then you have the range, not necessarily of a skiff, but you have a lot more range than a, uh, than a paddleboard or a canoe or than a. All right. So now we're going to talk about what kind of things I did to set this canoe up to be, uh, best fishing for me. I do a lot of fly fishing on the flats. Um, I take this in the back country of the Everglades for tarpon and snook. Um, chase bass in this thing. So one of the first things I wanted to do was make this thing really comfortable and I wanted to make it stealthy. So one of the first additions that I did was I put in sea deck in the whole bottom of the canoe. Uh, you can see here, this sea deck was done by Chase Hancock. He does custom sea deck. Um, we just measured it out, sent him the measurements and he sent me the sea deck. Uh, it was a little bit expensive, but it was a really great addition. It makes it a lot more comfortable. You can see how I'm sitting here. This is a lot of times how I sit when I'm fishing. Uh, you see how my leg is going across this hump here. This fiberglass is uh, not too good. It will get in your legs and stuff and start itching. So I put a little pad here right underneath my leg so that that would be comfortable. Uh, if I did this again in the future, I probably would have made this a ruler. That would have been nice to have a ruler right there. Uh, the next thing I did was uh, I got these alligator clips. If you can see my push pole is sitting in these alligator clips. These are $3 each at Home Depot or Lowe's. One of the best additions I've had to put on this canoe. Uh, if I don't want to bring my push pole, I can just take these off. If I want to bring my push pole, I just put them on there, adjust them however I want. Uh, this push pole here is a 15 foot Moonlighter carbon fiber push pole. This is what I use to propel myself across the flats when I'm trying to be stealthy and take shots at, uh, at fish sight fishing. I've had this for a lot of years, use it on the kayak, the paddleboard, and now the canoe. Uh, so another thing that we got here is we got the Yeti cooler. Bring the Yeti cooler. I got a nice sea deck on top of there. Very nice. Uh, unfortunately, this is a tunnel hole, so it doesn't balance too well in the canoe. So I had to put two two by fours underneath there. Uh, another thing that we got here is a paddle. I bring my paddleboard paddle just because it's the nicest paddle I got. Um, you don't want to go, you know, you got your motor, but you want to have something as backup. So I got the paddle, the push pole, and I got the motor, which we'll go over later. All right, guys. So the next thing you want to think about when you're setting up your canoe is weight distribution. Uh, if you're using this canoe with the motor and you're using it solo, that's going to be a lot of weight in the back of the canoe. Um, you're going to want to balance it out. So what I like to do is I put my canoe up towards the front. I put it right here so I can still reach it. Uh, up ahead of that, I'm going to have my bait bucket and my gas can. You're going to want to make sure you get a little gas can if you're using a small outboard motor. Uh, make sure you're only using Rec 90 fuel. Uh, this is the kind of can I got. I just put it up here in the front and then I got my bait bucket. Sometimes I bring this bait bucket even if I'm not going to use bait. Uh, whether it's like crabs and shrimp or shiners for my daughter or whatever. 
I'll bring the bucket anyways. And uh, whenever I'm going to go on a long run, I'll just fill this bucket up with water and it'll be up in the front here and it'll keep my nose down on my canoe when I'm running. So I'm not running like this. It's uh, a lot more efficient. All right. So, all right, guys. So now moving back towards the middle and the back of the canoe, I usually like to bring my waterproof backpack. I throw a lot of my gear in there, my fly boxes, uh, whatever you want to put in there, towels, bug spray. Uh, the next thing that we got here is um, how I set up my rods when I'm running and when I'm fishing. Uh, I got an alligator clip up there to keep them in line, keep them out of the way, especially when you're fishing. Uh, what you see here is like some grip tape. It's a uh, grip tape that you would get from like a tennis racket. And the reason why I put this tape right here is because when you're running, a lot of times your rods will have a habit to just start migrating all over the place. But this grip tape kind of keeps them in line. Uh, whenever I'm fishing, usually I set up my fly rod like that. I'll have my fly line stripped out in the middle here and I'll have my fly hooked to my cork ready to just pick it up and take a shot. So when I'm fishing, a lot of times if I'm fishing, you know, I'm pulling along, standing up, of course, uh, I'll put the pole down. Maybe I'll drop this anchor over. This is a mushroom anchor that I use. It's a cheap mushroom anchor and some 550 cord tied to the seat. So maybe I'll lower this down. All right, I'll pick up my fly rod, gas, boom, 10 pound bone fish, super easy. <laughs> All right, so uh, another thing that we got here, let's see, what else do we got? This cup holder. This cup holder right here was, I believe, like $5 at Bass Pro, and it doesn't seem like a very big addition, but man, this thing has been so handy to have right here. You're definitely gonna wanna get you a cup holder. All right, moving to the back of the canoe. All right, so back of the canoe, here it is, the classic milk crate, still bringing the milk crate along here 15 years later. I uh, used this milk crate on the kayak, use it on the paddleboard, and now I'm using it on the canoe. Holds these fishing uh, tackle boxes perfect. Throw a lot of your gear in there. Uh, you gotta bring your PFD, it's the law. You wanna be safe. Um, and then at the back back here, you can kind of see the, the mount where the motor goes. You wanna make sure your canoe has one of these, so you're gonna use a, a motor. Um, I guess we'll go over the motor now. All right, guys, so this is the motor that I ended up with here. It's a Suzuki four stroke, four horsepower motor. Um, it's a tiller, full start, kill switch. You wanna make sure you always put this on your wrist. All right, especially, I mean, always, anytime you're running your canoe, you're gonna wanna have this on your wrist, all right? Nobody nobody really taught me this, but you're gonna wanna put this on here, be running it like this. And you wanna take it easy when you first get it, cause it can get away from you pretty easily. Uh, this is a tiller extender that I bought from Walmart. I believe this is made for trolling motors, but it worked out perfectly for this uh, little outboard. Uh, when it comes to picking your outboard, I don't think brand matters too much. I did a little bit of research. Most of them are pretty similar to Hatsu, Suzuki, Yamaha, whatever you whatever you can find a good deal on that's in good condition. Um, the four horsepower, as far as weight goes, is it's a it's a good option for the canoe. If I could do it again, I would probably get a five horsepower or six horsepower. Uh, from my understanding, they're the same size and pretty much the same weight. The only difference is the size of the carburetor. Uh, so when it comes to using this, you just want to pull the choke out, give it a start until it cranks, pull the choke back in. You may need to give it a little gas. All right, you want to make sure it's in neutral. Forward, neutral, reverse, all right. Um, that's pretty much it when it comes to the outboard. Just find you a good one that's reliable. Uh, I'll go ahead and crank this guy up. I have it raining a little bit, so I need to I need to go ahead and run it, and uh, we'll, we'll take a look at it. All right, so before I crank this thing up, um, maybe you guys aren't too familiar with me either. I was just kind of starting out in this department, but you want to make sure you have a sawhorse to put this on. So whenever you go, whenever you go fishing, you want to make sure this is in the lifted position. Then you want to take it off the sawhorse, put it in your truck. The reason why you want it in the lifted position is so that you can just place it on your canoe whenever you're about to launch, because the canoe is going to be flat on the ground. So you want to make sure you put that in the lifted position. All right, anytime you're going to run it, you want to put it in a bucket so that water cycling through the engine. All right, I haven't started this up. I wanted to do this fresh. I haven't ran this probably in a month, so we're gonna give it a shot. Choke out, give it a little gas, make sure it's in neutral. It's pretty cold. That's pretty good. I haven't started it in a month. It's a cold morning here in South Florida and it pretty much drank up pretty easy. That's, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna let this run for a little while, let some water cycle through there. 
move the fuel around, keep it nice. You want to run this, you know, every so often. You don't want to just leave it sitting for a long period of time. All right, guys. All right, so that pretty much does it for the canoe setup. Um, this is not the only way to do it. This is just the way that I do it. I'm not an expert by any means. I'm just a recreational fisherman. I have done a lot of fish in this canoe. I caught a lot of fish last year in this canoe, some world-class fish out of this canoe. Uh, you don't need a $40,000 skiff. This is something you can store in your garage. You don't need insurance. You don't need a trailer. It cost me $300 on Craigslist and I take it all over the place. Flamingo, Everglades, Biscayne Bay, the Keys, bass fishing, all over the place. Um, I just slide it in the back of my truck. I put the tailgate down. I strap it down with two straps, throw the motor in the back of the truck and I'm good to go. Uh, all right guys, so get out there and enjoy. And uh, uh, to wrap this video up, if you guys have any feedback, you have any questions, any content that you guys would like to see me do, you guys let me know in the comments and uh, any likes or subscribes. Again, really, really appreciate it. And uh, thanks for coming. All right, bye.